What's up today guys? Jimmy from the RT Clinic here, back on location in one of our trauma rooms. I want to give a quick rundown of using capnography on a LifePak 20E. So I'm going to go over just a little, there's a little delay that you're going to notice with this and it's going to seem like ages when you're trying to verify uh, CPR or the fact that an ET tube is in the proper place and you have other tools, but we've been come so accustomed to capnography, which is really good. Uh, it just takes a little delay, so let me show you that real quick. So here's our LifePak 20E, and you can see on the bottom here we have a mod the module for capnography. I have the capnography piece here um, that's going to work for an ET tube. So when I turn this thing on, you're going to notice something about it. It's going to go through a self-test, and at the bottom it's going to come up for capnography. But uh, you notice it started up at 12.09.14. So we're going to see how many seconds it takes before it actually tries to monitor capnography. I'm going to show you this real quick. Right there. So at the 32 second mark, so um, 32 minus 14 would be be six, 18 seconds or so in is when it first tries to look for capnography. Well, that's going to feel like forever. At this point, after it's turned on, if I insert this down here, let's see down there, you can hear the vacuum turn on. And then I'm going to go from right here, put this directly in my mouth. You even get more of a delay after you actually attach it to the ET tube where you're measuring non-invasively. So let's shut this off. I'm going to show it something else just a little bit different. Sorry for the shakiness of the video. So let's say you're in an intubation situation. You come in and you hook up capnography right off the bat. Plug it in down here. And you turn the monitor on. And you don't let this thing warm up. And you put it directly from here into the on the ET tube. So currently I'm breathing on this. You see it's been, there's 10 seconds. There's 20 seconds. And right now, It kicks on. And then finally, almost at the 40 second mark after you turn this thing on, you're gonna start getting capnography picking up on the machine. So just a little heads up, the best thing to do when you're using capnography, you want the quick response time, you'll want to before you intubate, get all this stuff ready. So we're gonna plug this into here. I'm gonna turn it on. And then now it's gonna be 20 seconds or so before it starts to measure. So the one thing that you're probably worried about is like nuisance alarms, right? Because, so if I plug this thing in early and let's say it's a really tough intubation and it's hard to get, um, it's just hard to get the tube and uh, the capnography sitting here you don't want it over in your ear annoying you well what's actually going to happen it's going to start pulling the vacuum but in this case since it's not hooked up and it's not doesn't have any the high concentration of xlco2 it's not going to alarm so it's just going to sit in kind of a standby state right now and you can see right now that it's all ready to uh, be hooked up to the patient so if we're running right now i'm going to take this thing I'm gonna immediately gonna blow into it and I'll show you how this works. Ready? Wow, there's a beautiful cap no waveform there. Uh, couldn't make it any better. So anyway, getting it on and getting it ready before you have to put it on top of the ET tube is really key with this device. Hey guys, I hope this helps and uh, See you later at the RT Clinic.